So hello everybody and welcome back. Before we get started, I hope you all like and subscribe to my channel. I always see there's a lot of people that watch and don't subscribe. And they're returning watchers, so I don't understand really. If you want to keep watching, just subscribe please. Today we're taking a look at this SU-22 fitter from Kitty Hawk on 148 scale. It's a cool looking aircraft. I like, I like the uh, MiG-27 too. I was trying to find one of them. So let's get started looking at this. This thing has a really thick instruction book. Um, I think I think the uh, H1Z did too. See here at the beginning we have our our parts map. So we got nine sprues of plastic, and there's a the tenth sprue is clear sprue, resin parts two PE trees, and three decal sheets. So it sounds like it's pretty, it should be pretty detailed, it should, sounds like. So number one here, we're building uh, our pilot seat. It looks like there's a lot of parts there, so it should be pretty detailed. And here we got more to put on it. Then we have the bottom uh, of the cockpit, control stick, and another, another little stick that goes down here too. Another one that goes down there too. And we put the seat on there. Then we're building our cockpit area here. We got our two side walls here. First, we have to put this arm panel on there and build it, uh, put them two parts together and put it in there. Then here we have the back wall here with the part on there and the front wall too. Uh, we got our instrument panel and the cover part here. Then we built the site and put it on. So now we're at number four. We're build it, building the engine. We have our um, the fan and the two engine halves. And I guess we're going like this. Um, now we have. We put this together. Put that on. We get the other. The 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 fan on the other side. The compressor fan and the intake part and then this extra part that goes on there then we're building the exhaust here then we put the uh, the engine into the fuselage part here uh, the rear fuselage part put that together we got some uh, this ring and a couple other small pieces that go on there then Now this is optional here. I'm not really sure what it is. I think it might be the front. It looks like it's the front. We have these pieces we can put in. But it says RLMO2 gray. I don't know why it would be that color. That's a German color. But oh, that's that's uh, those two halves are these two here. So this is the other option here. Um, Either that way or this way. And then we put those two on. Then we build the tail here. Then we build the landing, the front landing gear here. We got uh, a, a wheel bay with separate walls. And a lot of a lot of little parts here that go to the wheel bay. Here's the front and the back. Then here we're finally putting all that together. We put the canopy, you know, we put the cockpit in, we put the wheel bay in. We have our intake here. And then two fuselage halves, put that together. And here they already got us put the canopy on, but I always do that at the end. You see there's a piece that goes in there, a mirror probably. Put the front and the back together. Got another part that goes on there. And we put the tail on, we put this forward part of the tail on, and this hump in the back, which is two pieces to put together. Looks like an antenna here, some other parts in the front and on the side. Looks like there's really a lot of detail parts here. Now this is, we got some PE to do here for these pieces, like this, that go around along the sides here. We got our air brake, door, a whole lot of little details. Our pitot and uh, the fuel probe. Then we go on the bottom, more details. 
and the fin that goes in the back with the other air brake. Lots of little parts that goes on the outside too. And here we've got the main landing gear. Putting that together. Here we got our swing wing. Putting the these doors on there and everything. And it looks like some guns. Is it a gun or is it a piston for the landing gear? And here in the middle we got painting instructions. Look at that last. Is that the end? It can't be the end. Definitely not the end of the build. It goes farther over here. Because now we're doing, we got this bottom part to put on of this wing. And then this put to put on too. That's our swing wing there. This is the wing base and here's the swing part. And this is constructing the wing. <coughs> Putting the landing gear in. There's one of the, the this front bay door. And we got these on there. Number 16 doing the other side. Putting the cannons in. Um doors, building the wing, putting it all together, just like on the other side. And then these two, like on the other side. And then we put the wings and the horizontal stabilizers on. Then we have a bunch of pylons to put on here. This thing looks like it's pretty heavily armored. Pretty heavily armed. Same thing here, some more pylons. And we got some flaps here to build. Lots of lots of parts and lots of footage for the flaps. Okay, this is a little bit. Well, this is definitely the intake. I'm not sure what this is. Optional. It doesn't really tell you. But here we build the uh, the weapons. We got these bombs, different types of bombs. Looks like a rocket pod. A missile. I don't know much about the anti Russian anti air to ground missiles. I know like I know more about the air to air ones. I've had more. But these these are all different bombs here. And then there's more here too. The fuel tanks. SPS 141, B13. KH23, I've heard I know that one. <laughs> I guess AFID or something like that. Lots of lots of different weapons we can build for this. And here we have a chart. You know what we can put on it. Everything we can put on it. KKR1T. So we have our the fuel tank. Can only go here. And all these can go here. On two. But then we have here one, and it is it's supposed to be empty. Same as nine. Why would it be empty? Uh, that could be. That's kind of weird. That they would have a pylon there that's empty on every every uh, every type. So let's go back here to the middle, where all the colors charts are. I don't know why they put it in the middle like that. So you see first. We have all the painting instructions for the weapons. Looks like mostly dark, dark gray, white, and silver. These have different types of, the warheads here have different types of colors on the tips. Brown or red or blue. And on the back side is more. That's kind of weird what they did. I probably should take it out and make it easier. Now we can see it better with it out. Get the staple out too. That's alright, I got a stapler, I can restaple it. I don't have a staple remover though. No biggie. So there's all of our weapons. And here is all of our uh, our stencils on this one. So 
So then we have this this version, Russian version. We have our Bayesian 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 green color scheme with the shark mouth. That's a pretty cool version. Here we have a Polish version, three toned, like light green, dark green, and brown, and maybe gray. It's a different color here, it looks like. Kind of hard to tell. But that's a cool looking version. It has uh, this blue color on the bottom. Now this is a really cool version too. Is that Austrian, I think? Why don't they tell you where it comes from? Not like everybody knows. I can't remember. I think pretty sure it's Austrian flag though. But it, it's Romanian. Kind of similar to the other colors, but uh, to the other on the bottom. But then the colors always change on the top. Here's the Polish version. It's like two tone gray. So we got a lot of markings and stuff. And this is a really cool one, I think, too. But I don't know what the... I mean, it's a West German version. But... Um, I mean, East German version, I mean. But what does it signify? Why is it these colors? Was it a... Did they have a... A team? Like a... Or something? I don't know. So we have a lot of options we can build, but the instructions aren't really really clear on to what they all are. So this has three decal sheets. Here we have, this is decal sheet A. Uh, the A has like all of our different land markings. Yeah, so we'll have a NATO marking here. The tiger teeth, the numbers, the different numbers. Um, See, there's a, the control, the instrument panel as well, and then all the lights and stuff, or the little mark, the markings. Uh, decal sheet B is a bunch of stencils and stuff, markings and stencils, lots of small ones. And decal sheet C is also markings, but there are different markings for different aircraft. You can see how they're all separated there. Or no, now looking at it better, these looks like markings for the weapons. I can see here the R R seventy three, R sixty, and stuff. Kh twenty three. So these are these are the weapon markings. So three big decal sheets. The colors look good on the decal sheets. Along with the decal sheets in the same bag are the photo etch. Two sprues of photo itch, photo itch. You can see this one is all, um, a lot of it's like the, uh, the harness and all these bands and stuff. The other one has like, uh, looks like parts for the wheel bays and, and stuff, frames and stuff. So lots of nice photo itch here. So with this is all this little plastic box, this has our resin parts in it, if I can get it open. I also read, uh, you know, Kitty Hawk went out of business because of the pandemic and other limitations and stuff. But Trumpeter bought up their kit, their, their molds, and I read something that uh, a, a brand called Zimi, Z-I-M-I, -I, is re-releasing Kitty Hawk kits as a, I don't know, rebranded kits or something. I can't get this open. <laughs> it's a resin parts though. <laughs> okay, now the little treasure box is open. So we have uh, a resin figure here. And this intake is resin. So 
another for the exhaust resin. Another resin figure. Another resin figure. Really cool. Here's some of the little detail parts of this re resin. A couple of the arms. Uh, instrument panel in this I don't know what it's called but I know it's the piece that goes in front of the the cockpit there the front part and here's one more piece for the exhaust so that's all of our resin parts so here we have sprue A see our front fuselage these are the walls of the uh, the cockpit, the floor of the cockpit, and a couple panels here. This is the smallest of the trees of spruce. Has nice and gray panel lines. The internal parts look good. The floor looks pretty good too. It's always seem to be mi missing cables and stuff on the floors, but I guess you're not going to see it anyways, really. There's not going to be anything here because it's going to be on this parts here. Then we have sprue B. The rest of the sprues are bigger. We got our wing parts. These are the inside parts of the wings and the swing part of the wings. We got these are looks like the horizontal stabilizers, the tail. We got a lot of the, the the weapon pylons as well here. Nice panel lines. Nice detail here. Here we got Sprucey. You see it's kind of bent. Because it was kind of like, not really, it was bent, bent in, the, in the box. The box should be about a centimeter wider, or, or, or longer, or something. Because it was like really, kind of, not in there good. Let's see what we got here. Once again, nice panel lines. Good detail here in these parts. Here, good detail. Nice detail all around, really. There's no flash anywhere. This look, this looks really good here. The air brakes. It looks nice. You see here, though. I don't know. I don't really know what these panels are for here. It must be part of the wheel bays. Then we have sprue D here. We've got our wheels. We've got engine parts. A lot of engine parts. And a lot of small detail parts. More, more weapon pylons. Engine parts look good, I think. It's a nice detailed engine. Don't know what that really matters. Not going to be seen too much, I don't think. Maybe we can leave something open to see it. Here the landing gear looks good. Lots of little, little parts. Lots of little details. I don't see where the problem is with this kit. It looks really good so far. The problem may be with the fit. Then we have sprue E. We see our fuel tank here. <laughs> Some of our weapons are here too. We also have like here, this was also in resin, but we have it here in plastic, which also the instrument panel. This piece, nice detail here. This has a lot of nice little details. Like here. On these pieces, Look really nice. Here on these pieces, really good molding. Wow, 
But I, I guess, I mean, if there's any problems with this, it has to be with fit because the details are great. And we got, uh, this is one of the weapon sprues. There's two. There's four weapon sprues, but there's two like this. And you see different weapons, different warheads, different fins, a whole lot of pieces. I'm sure there's plenty of extra, so maybe, you know, just put them on eBay, what you don't use. Maybe somebody else can use them. I usually put them up for a euro or something like that. And there's two like this. You see our missiles here. A lot of the bigger missiles and stuff. Some of the pods too. Lots of lots of nice detail parts here. And the last parts here are the canopy. It looks nice and crystal clear. The frames look pretty good. Also have these parts for the HUD and lights and stuff. So as far as the quality of the parts, I wish every uh, model kit that we bought, that I bought, had this much attention to detail. Now I don't know how good it's going to build together, but I mean it has a lot of stuff in the in the cockpit. The wheel bays look pretty good, and the, the molding looks really good. I mean, I really don't know how it's going to fit together, but they really tried to make a good model kit, it looks like. So, and it didn't cost that much. I've seen Hasegawa models and other model brands, too, where the kits cost like 70, 80 euros. And this one was like, I don't know, 40 or 50 or something. But I can't really say anything. The quality of the plastic and the details and everything looks really good. I guess the real, the true test comes when you build it. But as far as uh, how the kit looks, it's definitely good. It looks good. So thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe and join me next time. We're going to take a look at the ZSU 57-2 from Tecom in 135 scale. I hope everybody has a good weekend. And until then, bye.